everybody. Welcome to the channel. My name is Lindsay, and this is Life with Lindsay. Today, we have a whip and jet for you, but if you are new here, hi, welcome. My name is Lindsay. I do mainly diamond painting and some other crafting-related content from time to time, and I would love for you to like, subscribe, hit the bell, hop aboard the Hot Mess Express. Let's all be friends. If you've been here before, hi, welcome. Thanks for coming back. Um, if you do not know what a whip and chat is, that is when I work on my current whip, WIP, which is work in progress, and you can work alongside with me, um... It can be whatever you want. It can be while you're doing your own diamond painting, your own whip. It can be while you are doing household chores, while you are driving, while you are working, while you're avoiding work, while you're um, hanging out. You can keep it on in the background like a podcast. Um, however you want to do it. There is no right way or wrong way to whip and chat. So welcome. Hello. Hello. I am working on the Alice and the Black Rabbit. I... I'm hoping to finish this over the next couple days. Um, if you guys would like to see the unboxing for that, I will leave that up in the eye. But anyway, I hope that you guys are all well. I, my camera is really low, so I'm hoping that I don't hit it with the pen. If I do, I'll just readjust. The problem is the bottom of my recording arm. Literally nobody asked about this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. The bottom of my recording arm, I think I just need to get on the other side of my table and tighten it because it just keeps dropping, which is not great, um, especially when you're filming, but I'll make it work. I'll make it work. Uh, I hope that you guys are all well. I am recording this while my tiny human is at school, so normally, and we'll talk about this a little bit more because I need and you talk about this, and I need your opinions. Normally, this would be when I am doing all of the groceries, uh, but we had a bit of an issue this past week, so, um, yeah. Let me get into the week. We'll talk about things, and then I hope that you guys are all well. Let me know down below what you are working on while you are listening to this weapon chat. Um, I'm very curious how many people are working on their own whip versus how many people are just in the background while they're doing other non-diamond painting related things. Um, but let me know, let me know, let me know. So anyway, this past week, it's been a very busy week. Every week is a busy week, it feels like. Um, I had, I think, touched base on what we did Sunday, but then ran out of time, and I was like, I'll tell you guys next week, bye! Um, so last Sunday, my, normally we do McDonald's breakfast on Sundays. My husband picks it up, if he's not working, and, um... That's, like, our family time. I don't want to be like, that's our family meal, but I guess it is. Anyway, uh, she slept in super, super late. Um, we've been having a lot of, like, sleep issues with this child. She's a great sleeper once she goes to bed, but the problem is she's been staying up, like, hella late and I don't just mean like oh like a oh, like half hour an hour we're talking this kid has been up I can't even count how many times past 10 o'clock and then I have to wake her up at 6 30 in the morning for school and of course she's tired and she's also one of those kids that doesn't realize she's tired and um well you know fight you because small children are always right. If you didn't, if you did not know that, small children, no matter what, you could have the facts. You're wrong. They're always right. <laughs> if you have, if you have a small child, or you have a small niece or nephew or grandchild, or your best friend has a small child, or you, you know, you know, no matter what you do, you're always wrong. Always wrong. I've just come to accept it. Um, but we decided to go get brunch instead since she actually slept in super late. Which was nice. Um, I We just got her, like, eggs and toast because she wasn't going to deal with... It wasn't worth it for her to get the buffet. She didn't want that many things. And, like, I would... You know, I'm that person. <sighs> Sue me. Um, if I go to a buffet and I grab a couple pieces of fruit for myself, like, I'll let her have some of it. I'm not going to be like, well, nope, I have to order a side of fruit. and pay. Like, I'm, it's already on my plate. I'm not going to eat it all. Just take a bite. Um, but... You guys, this is, I don't know if you can tell in camera, the amount of confetti. Like, it feels like it's taken forever. So, I have a section that's, like, this high above it. And then I'm 
this part here, when I finish it, I'll be halfway done this bottom row. So, I'm hoping. I'm really hoping. I have plans. I feel like I may have talked about this. I have one of my big plans for what I want to work on. Um, I... My event, if you guys didn't know, Alice in Winter Wonderland runs through February 14th. So if you are watching this in current time and you still want to participate, you are absolutely welcome to participate. Uh, we accept you at any time. We accept you always. Um, but I was hoping to have this done and then I really wanted to squeeze in a Sparkle Queen's creation which I just did a double unboxing for that. If you would like to see that, I'll leave that up in the eye. Um, I, there's a Sparkle Queens event. And I was like, well, those are little canvases. I could squeeze that in. That, that should be no problem. And then I was going to start on my kit for the Lunar New Year event, which I'm going to hold myself accountable to this because I'm saying it publicly. My plan is to work on Train of Dreams from Randall Spangler. It is the one and only Spangler I have in my stash. Um, I don't think I even have any on my wish list. I'm not typically... Like, I think his little draglings are adorable, but, like, it's not my style to want to work on. Um, and I would be like, oh, I don't want to display it, but I don't display any of mine. Uh, but I got that one... I think it's super cute. I think my kiddo will love it. Uh, if you don't know the one I'm talking about, it's very, very wide. It's not very high, but it's one of those, like, banner kits. And I just put that color away. And I love it. So I knew I wasn't going to finish it for her event. But I was hoping that I could get, like, a chunk of it done. So... If I don't get that started for February, I don't get it started for February. But I would like to get that done this year. I really would. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to make sure I'm not missing anything. Because there's, as I said, a lot of confetti. I feel like half of this kit is just me pulling out the color that I already put away and bringing it back out. And being like, oh, I finished that. And then I'm like, no, I didn't. Um, but there's not a whole lot of some of these colors. So, oh my god, I just, I, I just put this color away twice and just found more. Um, I will say, I don't know where I put my initial notes for this kit, but I am, I have some things I want to talk about in the post review. So if you guys are post review people, stay tuned for that whenever I finish this. I'm going to keep this out because I know what's going to happen. I'm going to put it away and then be like, oh, there's another one. Um, like right there, there's another one. I feel like some of the colors on this and it's not a big deal to me but some of the colors don't necessarily match the dmc um which i understand it's not meant to be like an exact duplicate but it makes it easier when you're like oh i'm working on a purple symbol to find the purple symbols on the on the on the canvas um and i feel like this is like a dusty like mauve color but on the canvas, it's gray. And there's other gray colors that I keep confusing. Anyway, total tangent. Nobody asked for that information. And I. this is why I'm not putting it away. Because <sighs> the worst is when you pull the color out to, like, fill in that section. And then you can't find. You're like, I know I just saw it. Where, where did that? Where was that? Um, here's another color that I have previously pulled out and put away. And we're only a couple minutes into this whip and chat, and I've gotten almost nothing accomplished, and I've told you guys almost nothing. It's fantastic. Um, I'm going to assume that I'm done with this color, though, so I will put you away, which means that in a minute I'm going to be like, crap. Anyway, um, so we went to brunch. We had a good time there. You know, she's a little like, well, how come we can't have McDonald's? And we're like, because McDonald's breakfast is closed, friend. It ended already. And she's, she, you know, what? You know, one of those. I love when little kids do that. The other thing she's doing right now is a couple times... We have Google Minis in our house. We have a couple of them. We've got... We have one up here. We have one in our bedroom, one in her bedroom. And then we have a Google display in the kitchen. Um, 
And those allow me to, obviously, we can set alarms, turn the music on, things like that. But I can also, I have smart light bulbs downstairs in our house. Um, which, let me just preface this by saying, like, we are not, like, fancy folks. But my husband had those installed when I was pregnant. And um, the whole point was that, like, when I was carrying the baby and I couldn't get the lights on and things like that, that I could just tell it to turn the lights on. And it controls a couple lights in our house. And they're all downstairs. Though I think we should probably switch and add one to the hallway up here too. Anyway, but, um, so I usually play music in her room for her over her nap and at bedtime. And I'm sitting up here and I hear the monitor and I hear, hello. And I'm like, and sometimes you can't tell if this child is talking to you or if she's playing and I keep hello is anyone there and she keeps saying it just like that and I'm like yes and she's like my music turned off can I have music again <laughs> well I made the mistake of telling her I thought that was super cute and super silly and now she just keeps doing it over and over and over again so even this morning in her room I heard her hello all right kid go to bed Anyway, so after brunch, we decided my husband was off, so we were going to have like a family day together. And my husband and I had been talking back and forth. If you did not know, B is really into Hello Kitty at the moment, like the whole universe. Um, my Melody is like her absolute favorite. Um, which, if you don't know who any of these characters are, it's totally okay. But you have. A bunch of them and build a bear did an entire collection of hello kitty build a bears which if you are somebody who is curious about them they are much bigger than the regular size i don't think they're marketed that way but they are definitely bigger than the regular build a bears so i had planned on getting her a my melody and karomi they are uh often in things together, so you'll have them in merchandise together. Um, if you read, like, the lore about them, they're supposed to be, like, mortal enemies, but in real life, they're, like, not. They're just friends. And I think, I think I talked about this last week. I'm not sure. If I did, I'm gonna talk about it again. But I know a lot of people don't do Build-A-Bear because Build-A-Bear, they think, is expensive. Listen, I'm gonna girl math you on this real quick. And I'm not trying to convince anyone to spend money that they don't have available to them. But let me just tell you, if you are somebody who intends on purchasing from Build-A-Bear ever, there are ways to make the system work for you. <clears throat> First of all, if you have not already created an account, and by the way, this is not sponsored. This is not anything like this. is just me sharing my mom tips with you. If you have a, make sure you have one of the online accounts. It's completely free. You um, can earn points. You get promotional emails, things like that. Um, if you have a child who is having a birthday, they have the pay your age bear every single year. Now, I will tell you, for like the year of 2024, it'll be the same bear. So if you have multiple kids, it'll be the same bear for all of them, whether you get it in January or June or December or anywhere in between. Um, but what you do is you pay the age up until 14. And then after that, it's just $14. The price of the bear outright is $14. So if you wanted to buy one for someone, you could, um, but they allow you to do that for free. Then when you purchase, I think it's $25 or more worth of build a bear stuff. You can get a $10 gift card for $5. So for every $25 you're spending, you can buy another one of them. So if you spend $100, you can buy four of them. So you can get $40 worth of gift cards for $20. We do this every single time we make a purchase. And every single time, and I don't necessarily buy as many as I possibly can, but I buy at least one every single time. And let me tell you, the amount of times that we've gone into Build-A-Bear and I've paid $0.00 out of my pocket because I save up the gift cards. So, this past time we went and I told her, um, this was her Valentine's gift, and that it is. And I picked, I let her pick out, but I kind of assumed that she was going to want the, my Mel and the Karomi. 
And let me tell you, the next day they released my favorite, which is Kuropi, who's a little frog. I was a little bummed. Um, but also, I'm kind of glad they didn't have that while we were there, because then I think she would have been like, but I want a Kuropi too, and then been like, mm, I don't want to spend that much money. So, I also let my husband really wanted the pom-pom Perrin, who is the little golden retriever in the beret. And we, I did that, and he's like, I'm gifting this to her. So, she ended up walking out of there with three... Three new build of bears. Um, and I have enough gift cards for our next two to three build of bears to be completely free now. Um, you know, are they expensive? Yes. And is this something that is expensive up front? Yes. But if you plan it out, it ends up working out really well because in the back end, you can end up purchasing. And not having to spend any money. Like, if we do the birthday bear for her, which we've done every year, except for the one year over COVID, they weren't, I don't think they were available to do. Um, we, we always let her buy, like, a little outfit. Because if we're not paying full price for the bear, we let her get a little outfit. And so, most of the time, it seems like the outfits have already been paid for because of the, the gift cards. Anyway, that's just my little tip. But she was happier than she was like the most happy ever she was just in her car seat snuggling up with her hello kitty and friends and just you guys having the time of her life and i was very very excited see i'm glad i kept this one out because there's another one i don't know why when you guys pick your colors to work on like, obviously, if you're working in a section, you're not going to pick a color that's out of your section. But for me, what I try to do, and I would love to know your thing on this, too. Oh. Say, I just missed a phone call. But you guys wouldn't know that because my phone is on silent. Um, I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my train of thought. I'm so distracted. Um, I usually pick, like, colors that have large chunks first. Um, if it's a Hannah Lynn or something similar to that, I tend to lay the black down completely first. And then fill it in. But for, like, something like this that has a lot of confetti. And then I try to do things so it's, like, opposing colors so I'm not left with all of, like, very light white cream tan colors. <sighs> But I feel like I'm not doing a great job of that right now. Um, what am I working on? Anyway, so we did the we did the Build a Bear, which was super fun. My husband wanted to get every year, like once a year, they come out with the fantasy baseball magazine, and he is always like, "Let's make the trip to Barnes and Nobles." Or yeah, I guess Barnes and Nobles. There's no borders anymore. Oh my god, there's no more borders, right? If you guys have no idea, what I'm talking about the bookstore. I think that closed shows you how much I know um and so we always go they don't always have it out um or like we'll go and it hasn't been put out yet or they haven't received the shipment um I don't know how magazines work versus like books like books I know if they have a release date they are put out on that release day um but I think like with magazines it's like this is the first day it's allowed to be sold um I don't know if anybody works at a bookstore. Let me know. But we got that. And she was just chilling in the backseat of the car. Having a full on conversation with all of her little soft friends. Just going to town. Having the time of her life. Um, and it was one of those like. This is a great day kind of days. Um, and then we tried going to Chili's for dinner. And I know. I know. I know I talked about this. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. I feel like last week I was like, I have so much to talk about on Sunday and I just did like the bare minimum. But my daughter had lost the toy at Chili's. I did tell this story. It might not have been here. It might have been somewhere else. If I, if you guys want to hear the story and I didn't tell it, let me know. I'll tell you. But anyway, let's get into the rest of our week because I am spending a lot of time. So Monday, Monday, this is what I was referencing in the beginning of my video. Monday, we, I go and I do my grocery shopping. I think I posted the picture on Instagram, um, but if I did not post it here, I will post it here. Um, I took 
I go every uh, Monday to the market after I drop my kid off at school. And I've noticed more and more that I'm having difficulty finding what I'm looking for. Um, the shelves are much more barren. There's never anyone working at the regular checkout. Uh, it's always, like, just self-checkout, which drives me crazy. And I'm about ready to, like, go to Wise and be like, hey, uh, did, can I get my W-2? Because I spend so much time ringing myself out. Um, and I went and just the produce section, there were maybe three tomatoes that didn't look like they were on the verge of rotting. There were just whole sections where there was nothing and they tried telling me because I was like you know when do you guys when do you guys restock your produce and of course nobody ever wants to say to you oh we only get it on this day or this day or these are the days we put it out they want to give you the illusion that they are constantly putting out new merchandise which I can tell you is not true um it might be true at other markets but this market I can tell you that is not the case um and I was looking for tarragon. This is a very common theme for this time, this whip and chat. So, uh, I was on the hunt for tarragon, but not even that. Like, the entire produce section had just chunks of items just totally sold out. And they were like, well, you know, it's because you're coming in after the weekend and everything gets picked over on the weekend. And I was like, but I always come in Monday. And I'm noticing it's just getting worse and worse. I don't know if they're not getting a shipment anymore on a certain day. So by the time I come in Monday, there's even less on the shelves. I don't know. But I need to know, what day of the week is it that you guys go shopping for your groceries? And I don't do grocery delivery as like my regular everyday thing. Because for me, my home market that I go to is Wise. The market I'll go to... When I need something a little bit more difficult to find or just a slightly higher end, I'll go to Giant. I don't use Trader Joe's as my everyday kind of grocery store because it's 40 minutes away. And it's usually like I don't have enough time to go there, do all my grocery shopping and come home. A lot of times when I go to Trader Joe's, if I find like, meal-type things and not necessarily, like, sides, I will, I don't go with, like, a meal plan in place. But when I go to Giant or Wise, I oftentimes, like, we are a big pork family, and a lot of times they'll have certain cuts of pork, buy one, get one free, or certain sales on certain meats. And when you do it online, you don't necessarily see those kinds of deals and while I use grocery delivery from time to time for other purposes um like I'm not feeling well or I can't get to the market I don't use it as my regular every week grocery play trip um which I know a lot of people do but I find I do better being able to touch the produce and check out the deals on meat and things like that. Because there have been times where I'm like, you know what? I was planning on doing this meal, but they had a special on a different cut of beef. So I'm going to change that to next week and um, I'll get this instead. Is it the most efficient? Probably not. But I feel like it's more efficient than me ordering a bunch of things and, and missing out on sales. So, let me know what day of the week you guys go grocery shopping. What days of the week you have the most success with. I've had a lot of people tell me that they like to go midweek. My only concern with that is, like, how do you plan out? Because a lot of times towards the end of the week, that's when we end up, like, we're going to go grab dinner after work or something similar. And I don't know how to, like, plan from Wednesday all the way through the weekend and then make sure that I have food for Monday and Tuesday and not have to go to the market again. I would love to just go to the market once a week. That would be ideal. But let me know. I am all ears. Um, but I am so frustrated. So then I went, I picked up the kiddo. We went over to Giant because I was like, well, maybe Giant will have the tarragon. Um, it did not. Online, it said, I looked and Walmart did not have it. So I knew I was like, I'm not going to go to Walmart. It showed 
a local market and Giant both had it through Instacart. Um, that was a lie. I, w I was so frustrated, you guys. I just needed tarragon for a very, very simple dish. I just needed it for a tarragon lemon Dijon pork roast. Which, by the way, that pork roast was on sale. So I got two of them. And I was doing another pork dish that week, but I used a different kind of pork for it instead. I used that pork. Um, where's seven? We're going to do seven. I'm getting to the point now where I have, like, all these light colors in a light. This is how bad the static was in some of these colors. I have multiple sheets of dryer sheet in there. Um, but, you guys, I'm still frustrated. It's, like, a week later. I'm still frustrated. But I did not go to the market today, which is why I'm recording at this time of day and not while my tiny human is home. Um, so I am going to the market after school to pick up cube steaks. I have everything else I need to make. Uh, if you guys are looking for a good recipe, I really love the, um, Pioneer Woman's. It's a crock pot recipe for, uh, cube steak. Cube steak is not typically, like, a great cut of meat because it's just, like, pounded out really thin and there's not, it doesn't, it doesn't usually get super tender, but in the crock pot I find it really tenderizes really really well and I love 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 this recipe it's got cream of mushroom you can do cream of whatever if you don't like cream of mushroom um and then onion soup mix and sliced onions and um if you want fresh mushrooms I always put fresh mushrooms in I think I think they're a must-have and then I just cook it, and the meat is, like, fall apart, and it is so, so good in its own little gravy there. Serve it with some mashed potatoes, you guys. I, my mouth is salivating right now. I love this. And that is one of those I make it almost every week, but it's also one of those things that I know I can go to the market with my kiddo after I pick her up, and it just be, like, a five-minute trip. I don't have to do a full grocery shop. I have everything else I need. So I don't know if I'm going to go to the grocery, sh the market tomorrow or Wednesday. So please, please, please let me know. Although I guess by the time you guys see this, I will have already gone to the market or en route to the market if I go on Tuesday. Anyway, um, and then we had, you know, school and ice skating and just our regular things. Uh, Tuesday, went to the third market for Tarragon, and that's when I officially put up, uh, like, a I give up. Now, I looked online, and they said that basil is a good substitution for fresh Tarragon when you can't find it. This recipe was very particular on fresh, not, not dried, because I know I can get a dried Tarragon, but also, like, I'm never going to use dried Tarragon in another recipe. Um, but luckily for me, somebody I know offered to look for it when they went to a different market. And I was like, I appreciate that. Um, but Tuesday, so I didn't really do anything else. I am going to address a small business here. Um, I, okay. I debated whether I was going to say it by name, but I guess I am. I have never purchased from this company. Um, I had never heard of this company until somebody asked me about this company. Uh, and I shared something in my stories about it last week. So the company is called Sparkle Studio. I, again, have never interacted with the owners. I don't know anything about, like, their ins and outs. What I do know is that there are... If you are a brand new person in the diamond painting community... And you will realize when you look back that there's a lot to learn about this community. So this is not who I'm referencing. I'm talking about people who've been in this community for a long time or for, you know, a decent amount of time. There are two kinds, I guess three kinds of diamond painters. One who only will purchase legally licensed artwork. Two, the person... Who I guess I guess it is really two, or or the person who just doesn't care. Um, you have some people out there who will purchase unlicensed artwork because they can't afford the licensed artwork, and then you have other people that just think, well, everybody's doing it, so it's not a big deal. 
But for the people who do only purchase legally licensed artwork, we know this. And if you are new, please hear what I'm saying. And I'm not coming at anyone in a judgmental way. I cannot tell anyone how to spend their money. Um, I know when I first started diamond painting, like many people, I did not know about legally licensed artwork. I also started diamond painting during a pandemic when it was hard to get access to a lot of diamond painting. And so a lot of us purchased from dropship sites where we had no idea that it was stolen artwork. And then we remedied it by learning about it and doing better. But if a company tells you that they legally license their artwork and there is zero credit to an artist, and I don't just mean like, oh, on one, on all of their images, there's not a single artist credited. It is not legally licensed. There has been chatter in the community about companies who, and I don't know what companies by name, where they, um, because an artist is licensed to another company, they be believe that that meant they had the rights to print that because somebody had paid for a license. That's not how it works. But diamond painting companies, we are smart enough to know that if you say your art is legally licensed, that you give the artist credit. Do I believe that there are some shops out there that may not realize that they have to list it on all of their things? And if you ask them what the artist's information is, that they'll give it to you? Sure, I think that's a possibility. But this specific company had some images from You May Art. And you may post it about it on their own Instagram, and I shared that to my story. Upon further deep diving, I found that this company had a banner across the top of their website that stated all of their art was legally licensed, which now has since been taken down. And I found pieces from Jesse, who is uh, exclusively signed with Diamond Art Club, as well as the images from Yume, which had been taken down after they were like, hey, you don't have the rights to this. Um, I went on their Facebook and I noticed there were some really cute images and I said, oh, I really like this. I never had any intention of purchasing. I wanted to see how they responded. I really like this. Can you tell me the artist's name so I can go follow them on Instagram? Not only did they not answer it, but they removed the entire post. Um, and it was after that conversation that the banner had changed to no longer say that they were legally licensed artwork. I have no idea if it's still in their FAQs. I didn't go that far, but I will never support a business and you can make the decision for yourself. I am not here to tell anybody what to do, but I will never support a business that is telling its consumers that they are paying for, they're paying the artist, they're paying for the artwork, and then in turn, stealing the artwork and selling it. I will not support them, even if they realize they made a mistake and they're like, oh my gosh, I, I'm done. I don't want to support a company that is trying to pull one over on me. I don't want to support a company that is, at this rate, um, knowingly, stealing artwork and publishing it as if they have the rights to it. I will tell you the best course of action. If you ever see that happening is to reach out to the artist directly. Not all of them are going to open your message or read your email or whatever, but that is the best way to, I have sent so many emails to artists being like, Hey, I'm not sure if you have given the rights to this or not, but I wanted to bring it to your attention. Um, a lot of times they do not answer, and a lot of times uh, it never even gets opened. Another thing is, if you know it's an artist that is exclusively signed with a diamond painting company, for example, I reached out to Diamond Art Club and I said, I'm not sure if Jesse is exclusively signed with you or not, to which they said, yes, he is. Um, and I let them know the situation and I sent them the link and then they pass it along to their, their legal team. It's a lot different for dropship companies because those are, they follow their own rules because they, there's different copyright laws in China, which is so, why it's so hard to get stolen artwork taken down from a lot of these kinds of sites. 
But if this is a small business run company, this is something that, um, you know, I'm not on the legal end, so I don't know if they send a cease and desist. I don't know exactly what they do. But I will tell you, it obviously made a difference. And I'm not saying I'm the one who made a difference because obviously you may took things into their own hands. And um, I'm sure there are other people who saw that post who reached out to the company. But think changes were made. Um, and so I just want to say... I do not support this company. I will not support this company. I do not recommend that you support this company. And it's such a shame because I believe, I very much believe, especially in the small business world, it is our job to lift each other up. And there's a difference, as I said, between somebody who made a mistake, did not know, addressed it, and vowed to do better versus somebody saying, you are selling artwork that doesn't belong to you. And instead of taking the artwork down, they just change the wording on their website. Or they remove your comments. Um, I don't... I just, I find it so unprofessional and I find it so deceiving because there are so many people in this community who if they go to a website and it says, we legally license all of our artwork, are going to go, they legally license all of their artwork, and never question it, because why would they have to? It, somebody should be honest with you, and if that's how they're running their business, that's not something that I want to stand behind. So I just wanted to address that. Um, that was it. The next day, my husband was off. I was exhausted beyond belief. He took care of pick up and drop off. I was able to sleep. It was glorious. Uh, we didn't really do a whole lot of anything that day, um, but it was it was nice. It was nice. I made a nice salad for dinner. I had purchased a lemon poppy seed salad dressing from Target in their clearance section, um, which I don't know why it was clearance because it wasn't like near expiration or anything like that. But then I looked up salads that go with lemon poppy salad dressing and I enjoyed it. Um, next time I would skip the tomatoes. I didn't think that they added anything. Nobody asked, but I shared it with you. So the next day I had mentioned that I had said something to someone about my, uh, my tarragon situation. Actually, I had posts on Instagram and they reached out to me. This person is our hairdresser. She is such a doll and so incredibly thoughtful. And it, yes, if anybody is looking at this right now, I do have white drills in my white tray. And yes, it's difficult. It's very difficult to see. I normally would just grab a different color tray, but this is what I'm working with right now. And I'm just trying to get through it. So she said to me, I'm heading up to Wegmans today, which again, not close to where we live at all. And she's like, I will check it out and see if they have it. I'll pick it up for you. So she was able to pick that up. So I swung by her salon to pick it up. And it was funny. I pulled up and she's like, don't be mad at me. I'm like, oh no, what's wrong? And she's like, it's sitting on my counter at home with my apple that I need for lunch. And I'm like, no worries. It's okay. And she's like, well, my, my boyfriend, I'm not sure if it's her boyfriend or fiance, is going to bring me my stuff for lunch. Um, let me know your address. I'll have him drop it off. I'm like, girl, you are like five minutes from my kiddo's school. It is not a big deal. Just text me when he's, you know, brought it and I'll swing by. And she's like, are you sure? So we swung by. And of course, my kiddo, she's dying to get her hair done again. If you guys didn't know, she started the school year with pink hair and she, our, our hairdresser has already gotten um, the next color for us. Briar wants to do purple. I just have to find the right time. Uh, her salon is, she's split between two locations. So the one I can get to, if it's right after school, very, very easily. The other is further away. It just, I got to make the timing of it work. But she picked that up and I was so, so excited. And then... We had um, ice skating again. Now, I don't think I've really talked about this. My daughter has a history of um, eloping, escaping in certain situations. Like, I don't have to worry about her, thank God, opening up the front door and leaving the house. Like, she really, truly seems to understand that, like, that is off limits. Um, but... We've been having issues with her at the rink, getting frustrated, annoyed, whatever it may be, and literally climbing over 
and running into the the boxes like where the hockey players would sit and then trying to escape and we had a situation where that happened um and the one skate director pulled me aside and was like listen we can't have her get back on the ice and I was like I wholeheartedly support that I they love and adore her there and I know that my daughter's not only being disruptive which I've talked to her about um but it puts the other skaters at risk with the way she's behaving and these coaches it's not a private lesson it's a group lesson they have other kids they have to worry about they can't just drop everything to go chase you down the hall you've got kids coming in for hockey games and practices and whatnot afterwards and a ton of people with equipment and just there's a lot of moving parts and so they let her know like listen you get off the ice you and I don't mean to go to the bathroom I mean like if you escape off the ice you're done and so we had a long sit down and um she's like okay mommy I understand and I'm like do you like I really want to make sure you understand and we reiterated like okay so it was funny because that day we also went to public skate I don't ever do twice a day for her I mean have I yes god damn you guys this video is brought to you by the question mark symbol and not just is there any more of that? But look, I found another one that I forgot. I'm glad I kept it out. And it was just one of those situations where she had skated earlier in the day and I wasn't sure if she was going to be like on good behavior in the afternoon because it's been a really big struggle. Anything in the afternoon or after, yeah, anything in the afternoon has just been more and more difficult and it's, it's exhausting. But thankfully, she did pretty good. Stayed on the ice. And it was funny. When we came for the uh, public skate, we came with a, a friend. And our daughters are a year apart, but they um, are friends. And she, we noticed, like, the girls kept, like, going off to, like, the corner and chit-chatting. And so when I was in the car with her, I was like, what did you, what did you guys talk about? And she's like, oh, you know, stuff. No, I don't know. What does a five and a six-year-old discuss at an ice skating rink? Um, but they were, are you stuck? There we go. They were having the time of their life, and um, I hope we can do it again. But it was in, it was very interesting. I I'm trying to I'm I'm noticing as much as my daughter loves ice skating, and let me tell you, this child loves ice skating. She is all over our house doing moves, practicing, talks about ice skating all the time. Um, I can't figure out how to motivate her. So, I have a rewards jar that I bought for something else. Um, because, in general, like, when we were potty training, for example, her OT was like, and we're going to use a rewards chart, and it didn't do anything. Because she was just like, alright, well, I, I didn't earn it, but I guess I can try again, and just didn't care. Um, and it's hard to motivate somebody when you don't know how they motivate themselves, you don't know what that driving force is, and it could be one thing today and then never work again. Um, so I got this star rewards jar, and I talked to her about it, and I said, listen, we're going to start working on this. Every time that you have a good day on the ice, we will put a star in the jar. I said, but for every time that you escape the ice, or the big thing right now is during her lessons... She'll just skate around really fast in circles, but she's doing it in front of the other kids, so they can't work on their skills because they don't know which way she's going, they don't know, like, what she's doing, and it's been a distraction, and it puts the other kids at risk. And I said, when you have situations like that where you're not listening, or when mommy tells you it's time to go, and it's 45 minutes later and we're still sitting in the rink, that's when you will lose a star. And I had to explain to her the concept of like negative numbers. I said, if you have one star in there, but you lose two, then the next time you gain a star, you'll have none. She's like, what? You know, of course. Um, and so we talked about it. I said, you know, we can fill up the rewards jar. And when you fill it up, we can get a special little prize. You want to get 
like a little squishmallow or something like that, we can do that. You know, whatever it is, we'll pick a prize and we'll work towards it. And she said, okay. And I said to her, what do you think you would want to, to work towards? Like, what do you want your reward to be? You guys... When I tell you this kid broke my heart and like in the best possible way, she's like, I want a mommy and me date. I said, you do? And she goes, yeah. And I realized like all this kid wants is to spend time with me, which is crazy because I am the one who spends all day with her every day. And I'm like, that's like, that's really what she wants is just to spend more quality time with mommy not necessarily to buy more stuff or to go do this experience but just really she just wants to spend time with mommy and I said okay then we can work towards that so um we're I'm having trouble like in her private lessons too like encouraging her like on Friday um she had a private lesson and her coach even said to me like I don't I don't know what to do and I'm I'm just looking at her like, I don't, if I had the answer, like, I would have told you already. Like, I don't know what to do. And she just, like, she was so excited. She was going to work on all these skills. She wanted to run her program. And then she didn't do any of it. So her coach taught her a new skill in hopes that that would motivate her to want to, like, keep doing it. And it didn't. And it drove me crazy because I was like, what am I supposed to do here? Like, I don't, I don't know. So if anybody out there has kiddos... And, like, what unique ways have you found to motivate your child? Um, because I really am struggling. Because um, in the, I mean, when I tell you, like, in the car, she was just going on and on and on about how much she wants to learn and how much she wants to work on this and how excited she is for that. And then none of that translated in the lesson, and it drove me nuts. Um, and because we struggled with our lesson Thursday... Um, not Thursday, the previous couple weeks, I'm just like, I'm at the point now where I'm, I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to keep bringing you for these lessons if you're going to waste everybody's time. Because what she doesn't understand is like, whether she does absolutely nothing or she does all the things, I still have to pay. I still have to pay for ice time. I still have to pay her coach. Like, it's just... It's a lot easier to pull her out of a group lesson and say, you're done. Your behavior is not acceptable than in a private lesson, which I have done that as well. But, like, when her coach is like, well, I don't know what else to try, and her coach has been coaching for a million years, you know, you realize, like, she's not like every other kid that's out there. Like, the one day she was like, your mommy will go take you for ice cream. And I'm like, shit, I guess we're going to go get ice cream. And then she didn't eat dinner, and that was a huge fight. But anyway, I just, I am struggling i am struggling to figure out how to motivate her so i'm hoping this rewards jar really makes a difference and honestly this rewards jar is just for ice skating um we've had other rewards jars that they like work once and then they never work again or they don't work at all because she's just like i don't care um but friday her and i had a massive fight in the morning i don't even remember what it was about at this point and I had promised her that we would get one of the new Dunkin' Donuts, Heart Donuts. And I am not somebody that goes back on their word. So even though I was not happy with her, I told her, like, listen, I promised you we would do this. So we're going to do this. Um, okay, well, that didn't fit. So I picked her up from school. And you can look on the Dunkin' Donuts app and it'll tell you, like, available or unavailable or whatever at the stores. So I took her, there's one closer to her school, which is why she was upset because that one did not have them available. So I was like, I'm not going to just get one on our way to school. So we ended up going to the one on the other side of town, which was fine. She rented the strawberry one. I don't really care for the strawberry one. The uh, brownie batter one is like the best donut. I, I, Look forward every year when they release that. Um, so I place an order, one for her, one for me. We go to the window, and they're like, oh, yeah, we don't have any of the brownie batter. I'm like, cool, 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 cool. And I'm like, okay. And he's, like, trying to, like, read off a couple of the... I'm like, I didn't... I, he. What about the sprinkles done? I'm like, I didn't... 
I didn't pick the brownie batter because it has sprinkles. I picked it because it has brownie batter on the inside. And I was like, do you have this? No. Do you have this? No. Do you have this? No. And I was just like, after like four or five, no, we don't have it. I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'll just take a second one of that. And I am then very clearly turned around talking to my child in the back seat and talking about it. And the guy goes, no, you only are getting one. And I was like, no, I'm getting two because I ordered one of the strawberry and you're replacing the other with a strawberry. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, sir, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to my child in the back seat. And he's like, oh. And I was just like, because now she's like, I'm not getting one. I'm then we went over to the Walmart, which was right there. I needed to get a couple spices. And it was fun because we spent the time doing like a spice lesson and she was asking me like what's this what's this what do you use this for and I said you know if you want we can come back and you can pick any of these spices that look interesting to you or sound interesting to you and then we can figure out ways we can cook with it and she was like really and I realized like sometimes all it takes to get this child to just focus for a second on anything is to just engage her Instead of just being like, we have to quickly get this, get it, and get out. And did I want to spend 15 minutes looking at spices? Absolutely not. But I did it, and it worked. It made a huge difference. So, um, yeah. She was very intrigued, I'm not surprised, by the pink salt. Because pink is her favorite color. And I was like, it's just salt, kiddo. And she's like, what? And then she goes over, she goes, what's this? And I'm like, that's all pepper. That's, like, finely ground pepper. Those are peppercorns. That's a pepper mill. It's all pepper. And she was like, what? Um, and then we were talking about how paprika is just dried and ground up bell pepper. And she was like, that's cool. And um, in case anybody didn't know that, that's all that paprika is. But I couldn't find smoked paprika. Uh, I'll settle for regular paprika. It It is what it is. Um, but did we do anything else that day? Um, no. So, the next day, which I think I'm going to have to end on Saturday, which, you know, sometimes I can recap Sunday, sometimes I can't. And then I always forget in the next video if I talked about it or not. But on Saturday, I've talked about this previously. If you guys did not know, Home Depot, and I can't vouch if it's every single one in the country, but Home Depot does their free craft project on Saturday mornings from I think it's nine to noon or what if they run out before then so what it is is they have usually it's themed to whatever holiday is that month or season so this one was a Valentine's Day basket and you make these little baskets presumably to put your Valentine's in or to hand your Valentine's out in um very very cute is this the dollar sign this is the dollar sign uh, I knew for a fact this child would want to do this one because she's obsessed with Valentine's Day right now and she loves hearts and she'll like draw hearts all over every single piece of paper. I was like, oh, this will be a good one to do. So we went to the Home Depot. They give you all of the pieces that you need. It's usually like, it's something super fancy. It's a couple hail a hammer or a couple nails or screws or both um this time they actually had wood glue out which i was shocked by they've never had it out since we've been doing this um and each kit comes with the instructions all the materials and then a little pin you get your little home depot orange vest like all the employees have and at the end of your project you put your pin on and you display it and we've seen kids who have aprons completely full of pins which are super cool and then you've got kiddos who, you know, didn't even know they had aprons. And she made this little basket. She was so excited about it. Um, and, of course, we like being able to take her. The problem is, it is also the same time as our Tat Shabbats, which we go to, which are also only the first Saturday of the month at our synagogue. And with what time it was when we got up and moving for the day, I was like, I'm not going to rush Listen, if my kid is sleeping in super late on the weekend because she's not letting her body rest enough during the week, I'm going to let her recharge because obviously her body needs it. I am one of those people that um, obviously if you have prior commitments, that is not what I'm referring to. 
But if she doesn't have anything on the schedule, she doesn't have school, she doesn't have any activities, she doesn't have any appointments, nothing that she's already required to be at or commit to, I will let her sleep. Um, and I am the same way about myself. For me, a lot of times, like, obviously I can't just sleep in during the day because my kiddo has to go to school, um, which is why I was very appreciative I was able to do that my the day my husband was off. But a lot of times, I'll end up crashing, like, when I put her to bed and I will sleep from, like, you know, 8.30 at night until 6 o'clock in the morning when I'm getting her up and moving for school. Um, and I am one of those people, I wholeheartedly believe that, like, if your body is requiring rest, that's what your body is asking for. It is not a sign of laziness. So if you're one of those people that can't just lay around because you feel like you have to be productive with your time, if you have nothing that you are already committed to or nothing that you can't change the commitment for, like if you're like, oh, I have to go to the store, but I can go to the store later today instead, let your body rest. Your body is needing to rest and recover. Um, and with the time that she woke up in the day, I was like, there is no way this child is going to be able to get up and moving and rush to synagogue. Um and as much as I would have loved to take her to Tat Shabbat, I also know we are nearing the end um, of the program being for us. Uh, we are always on the older end when we go, which is totally fine with me. I am totally okay with that. Um, but I am also aware that if we move to the next set of group lessons for ice skating, that unfortunately Tat Shabbat is going to be one of those things that goes to the side because the lessons are at the same time. And, um, you know, it's a bittersweet feeling, but it's also one of those things that if this had happened when she was, you know, really little, I might feel differently. But we're halfway through the school year or more. I don't know. Um, but we did that. We had a lot of fun. Um, and I asked her, you know, a lot of times I will ask her, what does she want to do? How does she want to spend her time? And we had a gift card for her favorite place on earth, Five Below. And it was given to her as a gift. And we hadn't spent it yet. And so she wanted to go to Five Below. So we went to Five Below. And let me tell you, I have a kiddo who is... She loves learning so, so much. She loves school. She wants to learn how to read, which she's working on. Um... I can see reading is not coming to her as easily as uh, it is to a lot of other kids. Um, so obviously we'll keep at that. But she is super into math. And let me tell you, a place like Five Below is a great place to work on your math skills. It was such a good experience for her. We worked on problem solving skills. We worked on decision making. And most importantly, we worked on math skills. She knew she had $10 to spend. And for the most part, with the exception of a couple random items, everything there is in whole dollar increments. So first she picked two $5 toys that she wanted. And I explained to her, okay, so what's five plus five? She said 10. I said, so if you get both of these, you can't get anything else. And she's like, oh. She really wanted this other toy that was a dollar. And I said, well, if you get rid of the first $5 and you keep the other $5 and this $1 toy, how much do you have left? And she was doing the math and she was like, four. I was like, that's right. And she was like, well, I like the idea of four much more than I like the idea of, or four more items than the idea of no more items. So she went through and we found some items and she found like a $3 item that she wanted and a $2 item. And we did the math again and we broke it down. And then it came down to, do I get this $5 toy and five $1 toys, or do I get this $5 toy, this $2 toy, this $3 toy, or these two $5 toys? And listen, I was going to cover all the taxes and anything like that. Like, I was, I, that's not something she needs to worry about yet, okay? And she broke it down, and she realized she was getting a much better value for doing the $5 toy and five $1 toys. So we were able to get three coloring books, a tiny little pet carrier with a toy dog or cat on the inside, and this $5 toy that had a baby doll in it, a unicorn, a kitten, and a brush. And they were all very, very small. And she really likes, like, those kinds of little types of figures. 
and she was so proud of herself and I could see her working through it and she wasn't sure. She even said, I'm not sure what the right choice is to make. And I said, well, I don't think that there's a right choice and a wrong choice. I think they're just which choice is the best choice for you. And we talked through it and she has a very hard time, very, very hard time making a decision and sticking to it. A lot of times she'll make her decision and then you'll move forward and no, 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 and get really, really worked up. And she implored so much like willpower and decision making. And it was, and I know it seems silly because it's just, you know, a couple little toys, but especially for a neurodivergent child, those little tiny hits of dopamine, those constant little hits are, they make a huge difference. So while I don't super love that she's got a collection of just stuff everywhere, I can see that that $1 toy is the, is, can make a difference between it being a meh day and a good day. And she just really, really, really reveled in it. And um, we could tell she was super excited, had like boundless energy and all this. So on our way home, we stopped at the playground that's around the corner from our house. And we, you know, I'm a big fan of the positive reinforcement. Unfortunately, a lot of times with her, it's not always positive because there's not always positive things to be reinforcing. Um, and it's, she's a very argumentative child as much as I love her. And I said to her, I said, like, I want you to know. And I, I wholeheartedly believe in this, that as difficult as she can be, this child is going to change the world one day. And I, I do believe that. I think that she has the drive and the compassion and the heart to really make a difference in this world. And it's not an expectation of putting on her. Like, I'm not like, I need you to go out there and like be like philanthropic and change the world. I just have that feeling. Um, anyway, I am already over the hour mark, so I'm going to quickly... We went to the park. She had a really, really great, really, really great day. Ended up going out for dinner. Um, we just had a really, really, really wonderful day. And I encouraged her. Like, I love, I love watching you work this hard. And I love, I love how great you did today. And I just kept encouraging her. And I was like, please let this not be the last day of good behavior. But I'm going to get out of here because I've totally run past the hour mark, um, which I'm sure you guys don't mind. But um, please let me know what day of the week that you guys go to the grocery store and leave me some sort of emoji of something you'd find in your market. Um, if you like this video and you would like to see more videos like this, Please make sure to give this video two thumbs up. One real life, one virtual. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Come, join the Sparkle Squad. While you're there, hit that notification bell. I do not operate on any sort of schedule. I operate on toddler standard time, and I record while my tiny human is sleeping or sleeping or at school. Um, thank you guys for being here. I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys! <laughs>